want to thank everyone for being able to join today. Um, my name is Francesca Anaya. Um, I have been working at BLAST for about two years now, <laughs> uh, maybe a little, little over two years now. Uh, it's been a really incredible ride since uh, joining the BLAST team. Um, when I did uh, come onto this team, it was really just try to get BLAST out there to the market and see if anyone from softball would like it. Um, given my background in playing softball, I played collegiately at the University of Florida. I then got to play professionally for the U.S. State Pride. I had no doubts that this could take off and be successful. So I'm very proud of where BLAST is out today. Um, like I said, I really want to thank everyone for being able to join in BLAST's first ever coaching webinar. Special shout out to our panelists for agreeing to participate. I always joke that the softball community is large, but it's small at the same time. And it's been really special to see how our community has come together doing, during this unparalleled time. You know, this has impacted the world, our country, the softball community, but what we've noticed is that our teams are still wanting and needing to get their work in. And when talking to our Black teams, they started telling us how they're using Black differently uh, than they've ever done before and even more. And now it's starting to reignite the players' fire to want to get out and want to practice. So we thought, how awesome would it be if some of these people and these coaches got to share their knowledge on how they're using BLAST during this time? Our main goal today is that each of you walk away with like a new practice plan, that regardless of all the changes that's happening outside of our home, the game nor the practice has to change, and that our players can still work and achieve both their individual and team goals throughout this remote training. Um, you guys are going to be able to submit questions, or sorry, you're going to be able to submit questions uh, throughout, throughout the entire webinar. Um, we're not going to answer them until the very end. I will ask one question, one follow-up question for each coach after they're done talking, but the majority of y'all's questions, I will wait till after the end. And if we don't get to any of the questions during the live webinar, we will make sure that we get them answered afterwards by sending out an email to each of you. Um, so talking about our panelists, we have a pretty awesome lineup. Uh, I'd like to take this moment to introduce each one. Uh, leading us off will be LSU's assistant coach, Lindsay Leftwich. Lindsay has been coaching at LSU for nine years, and they've made it to four Women College World Series, series appearances within those years. Batting second is going to be Texas Tech's associate head coach, Sam Martyr. Since joining the Red Raider staff in 2016, their offensive numbers have basically surged in pretty much every statistical category. Uh, fun fact about Sam, she's also been inducted in Ohio State's Hall of Fame, and her and I grew up playing together since we were 12 years old. So fun fact for you guys, two fun facts. Uh, and in the three hole, we're going to have Katie Rekovich Browder, the assistant coach for Minnesota. In Katie's first season with the Gophers last year, she helped bring the team to its first ever Women College World Series appearance, and the team smacked 72 home runs. That's really okay. I think she can do better. Just kidding. Uh, then we'll have Josh Johnson from Virginia Unity. She'll be, uh, he'll even be batting cleanup. Josh's coaching staff was announced the NFBA 2019 East Coaching Staff of the Year, and that does not surprise me one bit. Talking to Josh, he really prides himself in his player development, and in the last four years, he's had several of his teams win both state championships and national championships. Then taking us home today is going to be Scott Smith from the Bombers. Scott was our very first impactful coach that saw Blast's vision and knew it was something that he needed to incorporate for his players. The driving force behind that, he has 125 teams in this country, and he wanted to make sure that every team, regardless of their location, was going to be able to get trained and get access to all the Bombers' resources. So with that, I'm going to get this started, and I'm going to toss it over to Lindsay, who's going to be talking to us about uh, how she's been using Blast during this time. Lindsay, you might be, I think you might be muted. That could be it. Mm. It's okay, we'll, we'll figure it out. Hold on, please. Let's get the her audio working for one moment, you guys. It can't be a, a webinar without like one 
error, right? I was hoping Sam made the first error, but uh, it looks like it's going to be that first inning. You know, you're nervous of the game, then you make two errors. Actually, you no, know, pitcher gives up a home run, but we won't let that happen. So we have hey, no one needed to know. Okay. <laughs> well, Sam, Sam's talking now. Hey, Sam, do you, do you mind if you jump in first while we get Lindsay's audio working? Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. You know, I All have right. not been a little most, most of my life, but I am happy to fill in the role for today. So, um, yeah, I mean, you are an, you're an ideal uh, leadoff hitter. So, take us away. Let's go. Uh, Grand slam. So, you know, fun, fun fact about that is I actually did lead off at Ohio State, uh, for a couple games one time um, because I was going through a little spell where I was walking a lot and my coach actually stopped doing that because then they would bunt and I get thrown at second base. So I had to stop being the lead off for a while. <laughs> that is a true story. Um, so anyways, thanks so much for having me, you guys. I'm actually doing this from outside today. So hopefully the audio works and everything, but it's the first day. It's been really, really nice out in Lubbock and really sunny and so uh, we thought we'd I got out here and get some vitamin D and I hope everyone's staying safe. And I just think this is super cool where we're in a sport that's willing to share, um, you know, and I think that's really awesome. And I will tell you this, that Josh, I'm really excited to get to hear from you. And I've gotten to hear from coach Smith and uh, Lefwich and Reykjavich and they're some of the most brilliant people I've ever met. So I'm really excited to, to hear from them too. Um, Francesca, is the audio working okay for me? Yeah, you sound awesome. You're crushing it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, I am really excited to be able to have um, this tool, not only to be able to use in the next coming months, but also to be able to use this summer. Um, you know, for us, we kind of were forced to scramble out of here a lot of our kids are not from Lubbock. We only have one kid who lives here. So our kids were really forced to kind of gather as soon as they can and, and to leave and to go home because we weren't sure what the restrictions were gonna be. Um, and right now it's been really important to, to us and to Coach Gregory that they've had some time to be at home and with their families um, these past couple weeks. And so was, I was talking to Coach Gregory last night about how we were gonna be able to utilize what we have moving forward. and. Um, the plans that we were going to put together. And I could tell you that a lot of our plans moving forward are going to be based around um, our sensor for sure. And just to be able to to collect, you know, I can't, the, the, the greatest thing about that sensor are just the metrics are something that aren't really up for discussion. It's either that you have this metric or you don't um, and you're making yeah. progress or you're not. And that's something that I really, really love about the, the, the sensor is that it's clear cut information. So I know for us to be able to have plans moving forward um, and have little goals that they can make that are going to be tangible for them to be able to see on a monitor are going to be so huge for us. Um, and I'm really excited to be able to see that moving forward. And honestly, I am as excited as anything that we have this in recruiting. You know, someone like all of Coach Smith's kids, right, that we recruit and players across the country, we don't know what's going to happen with recruiting. We don't know if I'm going to be able to go and actually watch them, right? We don't know what I'm going to be able to do in person. But the fact that I can be able to see how a kid is progressing now through what the sensor does and through all the things that come with this app, I think that I'm going to rely on it more than ever this summer. And I know that I'm so excited. Like someone like Coach Smith has this incredible hookup where he has so many um, things that he's going to be able to send us without actually being able to see a player. So I, I think that I'm going to be more rely on it than ever this summer with so many things being up in the air recruiting wise. Nice. I love, I love to hear that. I know that's a big thing for our, for our audience as well, because this is a big tool that people bring in for predominantly player development. And then they, I'm sure each and every one of you can actually speak to this. Um, you then you realize how many other resources that you can get out of it. And recruiting is certainly one of them. And, just like you said, this is a very important time if players can't get out on the field for them to be able to share their data and share their swings and share their information for you guys to be able to see. So thank you for, for talking about that. 
Um, and, yeah. you know, I do have one question for you specifically, just because I know that you and I get to talk often um, about how you're using BLAST. And one thing that I, was, I would love for you to share with the audience is how you guys use it in a practice setting, like kind of like your workflow during practice, please. Yeah, it, it's been really awesome for that. Um, you know, one of my favorite things about this sensor specifically that's different from a lot of other um, capturing devices is that each kid gets their own and that they can move mobily with it. You know, so for us, being able to capture a kid's metrics, whether they're in the cage or they're on the field or we're doing a whole workout all together, I think has been huge. Um, I know that for us, we've been able to project it and to be able to use it even as a competition standpoint too. We're very big on competing. Um, I think that's something that gets them out of thinking about their mechanics and into just doing. Um, and so I think a lot of people are afraid that the information is a lot for them. And the truth of it is, is that I think the information has almost gotten them out of thinking so much because it's gotten them into way more of a competitive se uh, setting. So for us, we've used that a ton. Um, and I've used it a little bit more for me, you know, post-practice to be able to see uh, different things that each kid, each individual kid is working on. And that's really helped me is to know this specific player needs to work on a certain thing and this specific player needs to work on a certain thing. But I think collaboratively, just the competition aspect of it. And honestly, just being able to capture how many swings we take, I think is really important to me too. Um, I think that was something that I realized early on before I even had this is just, we're just not taking enough swings. Uh, and that's something where people don't really, because there's so many amazing different metrics that you can look at, but just the swing capture alone, <laughs> I think makes it unbelievable. Because I know at practice how many swings that we're taking. And that's really important for me to be able to know from a, from a practice planning standpoint. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sam. I appreciate you. Um, I think we are good. Rick, with... was, a, was a boss as a player, just uh, so people know. I was not even nearly as good as this girl was. So if you guys want to see how to truly hit, you should watch her swing. And I think that on a webinar, Francesca, you should take some swings to show all of us what you can do. So <laughs> in case the mic doesn't come back. You're very sweet. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, on that red face uh, moment, I'm going to now pass it over to uh, Lindsay. Um, now she's going to uh, bat second for us today. So thanks, Lindsay. Yeah, thank you. Can you guys go on? Can you guys hear me now? Do I have volume now? Yeah, it's okay because I was really uncomfortable in the leadoff position. I've never been in that spot before, so this is much better for me batting after Sam. Um, I I think for us, we're kind of in the same boat that Sam was in. Our kids left literally in an instant, like. Um, the SEC kind of shut everything down, said no practice till a certain time. And so we pushed kids home as fast as possible just because we didn't know what was going to happen with travel plans, with flights, with all that kind of stuff. So for our kids, they really got home and felt this like massive amount of like loss, for lack of a better word. Like it was almost like the five stages of grief, you know, like they went through like denial and then anger and bereavement and all these things and they didn't really know how to deal with it. So We've tried to check in with them pretty consistently. We've had a, a Monday call set up with them for the past two Mondays. We'll continue that as we go. That's a screenshot that you see right now of my team. Um, we checked in with Brian Kane. He's our mental performance coach um, on that day and just kind of tried to continue in some of those same things that we were doing. I mean, Lord knows we build in, like, we make our kids be so routine oriented. So for them to go home and not have a routine is really difficult for some of them. So that's kind of like been our biggest focus. Um, it's just how we can keep them in a continual routine. Um, as far as like black stuff goes, we have, we haven't sent them a workout yet. We wanted them to get home and get settled and figure out what life looks like. But um, as our workout is going to be really, really based off of blast, which is something we always do. Like our Christmas and summer workouts are always really blast oriented because I feel like it helps give them more constraints. Um, without getting so caught up in the mechanics because when they're working on mechanics on their own sometimes so many things get lost so some of the reports that we send them look like one of the ones that just popped up on the screen um these reports we pull straight from our blast metrics we want the kids to be in the green squares and group as tightly as possible so like they know right away if i have all of this variance outside of a green square then that's something that i got to clean up which is really easy for them to see like Sam talked about, so many times they get so lost in the numbers. They're like, well, how come I can't hit that number? Well, that green square is a lot bigger than just trying to hit 90 at early connection. 
so it gives them a little bit of you know there's we make them into perfectionists to say the least so it gives them a little bit of like comfort that okay i don't have to be 90. i have to be somewhere within this that helps me get my best swing off so our metrics will look i mean our workouts will look really similar to everything we've always done based on what they have access to luckily we have some really great people in our corner like scott and um, his organization and some other people down in Texas that are doing some things like they're calling us and saying, how can we help your kids? How can we get them in? Where can we put them? You know, and obviously none of those things can happen yet because we're all shut down. So this is the first stuff that we're going to send home is like, what can you do in your backyard? From a med ball, from med ball stuff to PVC pipes to dry swings, like you name it. And we'll try and build some blast stuff in as we go. But for the most part, right off the bat, it's going to be like, Let's get us back in some sort of swinging routine. And then as soon as you can get out of your house and get to an empty field and do whatever, then we'll put in like real hardcore black metrics. Um, and we build our stuff saying like the whole week we're doing, like you're looking at early connection. And these are the drills you should be doing in early connection. Try and give them very few cues and give them more like outcomes. Like if you can hit this ball off the top of the cage and your number is close to this, then you're doing things right. Instead of just cueing them so much with, Okay, it has to be this exact drill at this exact number. We give them a little bit of more room for growth and room for error. I think the coolest thing, Lindsay, that I heard you say, and Sam kind of said it too, is because we get this a lot. Like, we don't want to overwhelm the athlete with information, right? We want to make sure that they're feeling prepared with this information to where they can feel successful, to want to go out and swing and bring the app with them so they do know what their numbers are. Um, I think a lot of the times players are so caught up, just like you said, in what that result is, that when you can, like, clone it back and just like you tell them as a cue, hey, we need to get our hands inside, is, hey, we need to try to get to this, we need to try to do this so we can get to this number. That's going to be our result, and that's going to allow for you just to kind of hit it and rip it once you get to get to the game, get into that game feel. But one question that I really have for you, and because you and I can talk so much about how you prepare your athletes when they do leave uh, for break. You know, she showed me what their winter workout program was, and I was like, oh, my gosh, like, give this to me. I want to go out and swing like this. Because it, just like you said, it was very detailed and structured. So the, the player knew, okay, today I need to go out and take my 200 swings, and this is what my focus is on for my number. So how often would you say you're breaking down the numbers to your players and what is that communication like with them? Um, when we're on campus, we're sitting down with them probably once a week. Like we're posting numbers once a week. We do the same thing as Sam. We use it from a competitive standpoint, from a like a number of swing standpoint a little bit. But then on top of that, we just want them to know that like you can still be crushing things and you're not your number isn't exactly whatever. Like you're not exactly in the green and you're still squaring balls up and that's okay. Like Going three greens across the board is really hard. Um, so I would say we, we talk about the numbers every day. And then we really sit down and break, like look at actual what's happening with you uh, probably twice a month um, once we're in, like, in season. I'm looking at it every day, but they're not. And then when they go home on break, I pull the numbers like every Sunday and send them back out on Monday. We'll send them um, – we were sending like our own graphs that we were making, but now that blast – um, hooked me up with this really cool player swing profile. Now we're sending these, um, which is way easier for them to understand because the, like they see that big green box and they're like, oh, I am within that. I'm fine. And you don't get the response in a text message like, oh, so you're saying I'm su I suck. Because that's like their first thing. Like, oh, well, I'm not close to that. Yeah, you are. You're a lot closer than you think. So um, I would say when they're on break, we're looking at it probably once a week. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate your insights. Uh, appreciate you, Lindsay. Um, guys out there who are listening in, please don't forget to send in your questions. We want to make sure that we're answering everything for you guys. Uh, so send those in so we can answer them um, afterwards. Um, well, next up is the, the gopher uh, up in Minnesota. Uh, I, I think that she's actually in Tennessee with her family. So um, her internet might be a little um, in and out, but just make sure you got that volume turned up. And she sent me her notes too, just in case. So take it away, Katie. Hi guys, thank y'all for being here. Um, for us, we're a little bit like what Lindsay said. We have been giving our kids a little bit of a break, like Sam said too. We're giving them a rest, you know. Um, this is very unexpected for the time to happen like this, but their bodies were a little bit banged up. So we're giving them the opportunity to rest, transition to online learning, um, navigating those waters. For some of them, they haven't had any online classes before. 
So they're a little bit different in their structure. So we're giving them a chance to figure that out. Um, and then we'll transition into more of a training phase in the coming weeks. Um, I haven't sent out a training plan yet, uh, but we will. The first thing I'll do is, A, figure out what they have access to. Do they have a tee? Do they have someone to flip them balls? Do they have a cage? Do they have a machine? And then once we figure out what they have access to, then we'll create um, a more individualized plan for them based on what I feel that they need to be working on through their off season. One thing they have been given more of is time, and that's time to work on um, their off season things, whether that's getting prepared for next season or um, that's just continuing to work in the development phases that we are currently in as a program. Um, hopefully, you know, that we've done a good job as coaches and I, and I hope I've done a good job is, is creating self coaches and that now that this has happened, they're their own coach. Um, I'm not there. I can't talk to them virtually every single day while they're there hitting on a tee, but they've created their own coach. You know, we always do something in practice where we, we call it a creative cage and I give them access to a cage for around whatever it is. And that's their time to do their own thing. You know, if that's, when they can work on their strength or their weakness, whatever they want to do. And hopefully in that space, in those training environments, they have been creative. And then now that they're home and they don't have access to a coach every single day, that they're their own coach. They know what they need to work on. They can go back, they can look at their numbers, they can communicate with me based on what we've done in our training environment, but they can move forward and be developmental in the things that they've done. So um, that's one thing that we've definitely worked on. We do weekly videos. Uh, Monday and Friday, they submit a video to our Google Drive, and it's just catching up on them. What are they doing? You know, they're not used to, like Lindsay said, being on their own. They're not used to being at home with their families and not being around their teammates. So we try to maintain the structure, um, and we've made sure to include some gratitude with that. And our head coach, Jamie Traxel, she's really big on being thankful for things and being um, open and talking about gratitude. So they finish every Monday and Friday their video with something they're thankful for, whether it's just being with their family, they're thankful for their help, um, different things. And then every now and then they'll relate it to something softball, but just spending the time with their family and um, just staying healthy. And then we'll, we'll transition into our training phases in the coming weeks. When you transition to that training phase, what do you think is going to be something that you'll kind of hit on heavy with? Like, what do you want their focus to be kind of moving forward? Yeah, so we'll continue with the same terminology that we've been using. We're really big on adjustability. So that's training in balance and training out of balance. So we'll stand on a balance beam and then I'll make them in really uncomfortable positions. How can you stay over the ball down and out and squeak out a single when you pulled the trigger out of pitch out of the zone that you maybe shouldn't have? So figuring out how to move in, in balance and out of balance. Um, we're big on posture. So we talk a lot about our postural, maintaining posture through the swing. So we have a hula hoop and we put the hula hoop around our body and we figure out how to maintain our posture. Um, so they'll be, they know some drills they can be creative with on that end. We like to train our acceleration phase. So how to accelerate into the swing path with a rotational acceleration, but just as much we're training the deceleration patterns as well. So being able to control the finish of your swing, do you just pop off the ball after contact or can you control a complete movement and complete motion? from the very beginning to the very finish of your swing. So whether that's just pausing at contact for a second and then maybe holding your finish for a second, just engaging your core um, and just working on those things. So I know they'll work on their posture, their adjustability, their balance, mobility, flexibility. I mean, there's a million free YouTube yoga videos that you can pull up and just work on their balance because they're not really good at balance. They fall over if you like touch them. So um they can buy the little blue um like balance pads off amazon and just stand there and work on their balance while they're while they're just watching tv or a new netflix show stretching just getting better at that we do a screening mm -hmm. when they get to us in the fall our trainer does a really good job of just just figuring out their mobility in every part of their body from their finger flexibility to their ankle mobility and they know where they stand in all of those areas in different areas that they need to get better at. So we'll go through a lot of that and then they'll just efficiently train their pattern. You know, are they moving efficiently? You know, where where is the energy being lost? And they know that. And they know some different drills at home that they can do, whether that's a bungee cord that they got from their dad's truck, that they can just click on something at their house and just work on their patterns moving. 
um, and just working on being really efficient. So things they can do in their home, but also things they can do outside their homes too. Awesome. Thank you, Katie. Um, I mean, really the biggest thing there is that you can work out with anything, right? We, we can find a way to get better, whether it's going to be in front of the TV, whether we're in bed, whether in our dad's truck, maybe the mom's truck, who knows? Uh, so, yeah, thank you for doing that. Uh, hey, Chris, can, I, can I say something just to hit on? Yeah. Yeah, I think that Katie said something that was really, really smart that I don't want to miss and um, about being able to learn how to be your own coach. And I, and I got, you know, a really cool opportunity to be able to play with – against some of the best hitters, you know, in the world and in the pro league and hitters like you, right? And um, I, I don't know if, if you agree, but I felt like the people who were most successful at that level were ones who understood their own swing and understood how to coach themselves and understood how to have adjustability on their own without someone telling them. Um, and I think that that is such a cool opportunity right now is to be able for all of these hitters around the country is to be able to do that. Right. And to be able to understand their swing for them to really yeah. intimately understand their swing and to understand themselves as a hitter. Um, and I think that the best things that we can do sometimes as coaches is to step back and to give them the space to be able to have ownership of their swing. Um, mm -hmm. so I I, 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 like, uh, you know, uh, when I left Florida and I got to the MPS, I thought I was a good hitter and I got humbled very very quickly and because of your point I didn't know how to self-coach myself I didn't know how to get myself out of that hole it took me a whole year to figure out like it's on me to figure this out now I can't rely on my coach to tell me the adjustments I need to make I need to know that and to your point this is where our athletes can start growing because the self-coaching has to happen they still have you guys there to guide them but they're going to grow and their their softball IQ is going to grow so much if they're putting the work in right now and listening to this information that's out there. I completely agree with both of you guys. Yeah, it's the one word you just said, it's ownership. Ownership is the key to it. And some kids have it and some don't. And right now they're given an opportunity to see if they have it. Are you accountable for every action? And are you taking ownership over your development at this point? You know, we could be away from each other for six, seven months at this point. Who knows how long this is going to last? But are you disciplined enough to take ownership over every single action, what you're eating at this point, how you're training your bodies, how you're fueling your bodies, and how you're swinging the ownership pieces? It separates the good from the great. And it's a fine line, but I, I'm a firm believer that that's the, that's the line and it differentiates the good from the great. Yeah. I love it. Anybody Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. They still have this information though still through you know their sensor right they still have this safety net they still have this information that they can that they're going to be able to use to help coach themselves but truly understanding and truly going into it individually about what each one of these metrics means to their swing and then having the freedom to kind of play with it a little bit and see what works for them i think is going to be is going to make our hitters better personally love it i love it thank you guys um Okay, let's switch over to the travel ball world. Let's switch over to that youth world, okay? Uh, Josh, uh, what are you guys doing over there in Virginia, please? Well, hopefully we're trying to teach them how to compete and stay safe through this, uh, through this coronavirus. Um, like, like the coaches before, we're, you know, we're trying to have everybody um, learn their own swing so they'd be self-coaches to themselves, and this is a good time. Uh, unlike them, we, we get them at a younger age. It's just... The, the nature of the beast, somebody's got to do it. Uh, the travel ball world has just been great. We started the organization in July of 2014. Um, so we're still fairly young. We have right around 18 teams, not quite the 125 as my man Scott over there, but that's uh, that's impressive, you know, building the beast. But it's like it's like when we started the program, it was all local kids. You know, you, you took a little league program and you had what you were, you, the cards you were dealt and you just tried to grow with them and grow with them, grow with them. And then players want more out of it. And that's where we went to more of a regional team. And now hopefully we're going to a national team. And that's where you find Blast, in my opinion, to be the biggest asset. Uh, there's some kids that you just can't coach every day. So you have to uh, hold them accountable in a different way. Um, and so, you know, at that, at that point, we, we needed to find a way where we could connect with them without being with them face to face. So we've kind of almost been dealing with this problem you know, for the last two or three years now. Not that not the problem of you know viruses and being sick and the whole nine yards, but having to find creative ways to have kids that weren't with us on a daily basis be on the same page as us coaches with a uh, a goal mindset. 
Um, you know, when you look at uh, the number of swings that these, I, I heard Sam talk earlier, just seeing the total number of swings, all these swings, swings, swings. Um, and we actually just did a contest. So if you can flip the, the slide to the contest slide, as an organization, we just did a contest. Uh, I can't take credit for this. Uh, one of our other coaches, you know, uh, just kind of we're chit chatting one day and she's like, how about a competition? And what we try to preach as coaches is when you leave the Unity organization, you know, we want you to be better people, but you know, at the end of the day, your resume is gonna have to stand up against somebody else's resume. So competitiveness is something that I try personally to get every one of my kids to, to do, compete in everything they do, uh, you know, as far as classroom. You know, I remember being that 12 year old kid, you know, printing on the, the top right corner of the paper. If the J didn't look good, I would crumble it up and throw it away, get another piece of paper and start over again. So just com competition as far as checkers or chess, whatever we want to do, we want them to win. Um, so we put out this, we put out this challenge, uh, individual challenge, and we're also keeping track of it as a team. Uh, we started at uh, March 18th and we're running through um, April 1st. Basically it is how many swings you get off in a day. Um, prime example, last night for uh, that was yesterday's date, we, we had uh, over 13,000 swings as an organization among 67 kids. In the last week alone, we've had over 66,000 swings uh, and about an average of about 60 or so kids swinging it. Um, so we, we, we're just getting a lot of great data. Um, and you can, you can kind of see the slide as far as we have daily leaders. You know, we've kind of given them a reward as far as ice cream party or player with the most swings, get some unity swag. You know, we download them uh, daily. So if you, if you use them, you're taking cuts without the blast or you don't upload them, it doesn't count. Uh, no cheating. It's not like you can have your little brother take swings with your blast just to get the numbers. You know, we go through the metrics and, and kind of see what's going on and um, they just don't lie. So, um, you know, there's there's the competition piece right there. We have, we've had over 104 of our 178 kids participate. We have had 14 teams participate. And then during that date range, we had over 77,000 swings. Um, and then a great thing is that brings out the competitive nature alone. Uh, we have a couple teams that are really taking it to a different level. Um, we have some kids that are taking 17,000. You know, our 13U team took 17,000 swings as a team last week, but then our 10U team right below it took 11,000 swings. So you know, you're looking at these swings going. You know, it doesn't it doesn't correlate down to the young ones. That's where I think we're missing the boat. You know, when when I took on the Blast partnership um, at the NFCA convention in Chicago is really when we came on as a as an organization. We came and went right to it and made every one of our kids get them get on board. Uh, we added it to their dues, um, and then we just add the subscription piece yearly up to to update their dues, and uh, it's a requirement. So the tenue piece to me is, is actually probably the most exciting thing for me because I I was coaching 18U and 10U teams uh, at the same time, so I was going from an 18U week into a 10U week into an 18U week into a 10U. So it was really crazy, but watching them uh, want to emulate the older players was so big and they want to compete against older players. Um, so one of our 10 year coaches, his daughter was actually, she hit 1300 swings in one day, which I think is too much, but she, her dad took pictures of her hand and it looked like she's been out, you know, climbing real ball day. Her hands were just ripped up, but she wasn't going to stop doing it because she wanted to compete. You know, uh, you know, as, as the admin on the, on the blast connect, I'm able to see everybody's swings, every individual swings, but these kids can't see, if there's another kid in front of them so they're trying to post a number that is almost unattainable so that nobody can beat them so what we did and if you if you flip the slide um coach jenny and myself we were talking the other day and it got to the point where we were like do we really want them to just take swings you know and i was like eh, yeah you're, we're seeing results by them just taking the swings because the more you do something the better you're going to be at it let's just be honest and the the way that they're so technology savvy than what we were at our age uh, you know, they, they love looking at the, their iPod or their iPad right there beside them and look at every swing. I'm not sure if that's the greatest approach about it, but I'm hitting with my daughter in the basement last night. She's the same way. She's every swing. Oh my gosh, I only got two greens. And I heard the, the, the three greens are very hard to attain. You know, we have had several kids get those this week for the first time. And the text messages I get, the reaction I get, the video messages they send me are like, through the roof, like with excitement and joy. So this slide right here, uh, it's only a week long of data. Um, like the blue swings was the first uh, three days, or what was it, the first three days we competed. Um, and obviously coming out the gate, they took a lot of swings. So you see player A through K, 
how many swings they took in the first three days. And then we kind of correlated to how many swings they took the last four days. And then we just kind of broke it down from there. Um, and you can see what their average playing score was for those days, the average playing scores for the last four days. And then did they improve? When you see the green and the red and the yellow, it's basically improvement from the first three days to the last four days of their swings. Um, and you can see there's a lot of green. There's a lot of red, but that some of that red also comes from me grabbing them and going, you swung too much. You're, you're, not, you're not really thinking about your, you know, the, the, the fundamentals of your swing. You're just trying to just get up there and rip it. So that was probably, like you see the total swings, uh, the difference is you'll see a lot of red there because I, I kind of pulled the reins back a little bit and said, hey, we're just, we're not doing what, yeah, it's great that we're competing for the total number of swings, but we're not getting out of it the quality that we're looking to get out of it. Um, so like, like I said, in this slide, you can just see a lot of, a lot of great things. And on the bottom uh, is our team average for those particular scores, that last row. Um, and you can see improvement across the board uh, for the most part, with the exception of, of three or four metrics. So we're, we're actually getting quality and quantity and uh, goal setting out of it as well. Hey, Josh, I have a question. Do you ever have um, your athletes send in their, in case if there's anyone out here who doesn't really know too much how Black works, basically, if every player out there has a sensor um, and they have, there's a coach account with it, players, regardless of where they are, their swings are going to get uploaded into this master portal, including videos of the players if they, if they do take video of their swings. So my question is to you, Josh, do you have your players as well as uh, take videos so you can see on the portal as well? 100%. Yeah. And our challenge today, we called it Take Flight on Friday, is to use the Ball Flight app, the piece of the app. Right. Um, so, if, you know, the, the bottom of our uh, has our social media stuff. And you just kind of follow along with the challenge. But today um, was all about Ball Flight and trying to get it. Uh, yesterday, I believe, was um, take off. We was focused on playing. The day before, really, we didn't care about metrics other than uh, that bat speed. We were trying to really focus on that bat speed for that day. So we challenged our kids to just swing as hard as you can. I mean, maybe not just arms, but just trying to get your sequence right so your bat speed jumps up. Um, and uh, kids got mad because the numbers were going the other way on some other things. But yeah. at the end of the day, that wasn't the purpose of that particular drill. Because as you know, if you work on this drill, maybe the other ones might suffer. Uh, the other scores could suffer. And that's, I think, you know, for all the travel ball coaches that are out there listening, that's probably the hardest thing is they can't fix everything at once. Uh, I found personally, if you, if you fix early connection, a lot of this stuff kind of falls in place on its own. Um, you know, obviously if you fix your sequence, a lot of things are going to fix uh, on its own. And there's a lot of great, you know, hitters, videos, instructors out there um, that we have, you know, Antonelli and, and Carlton and, and a bunch of these other hitting uh, instructors that we're just stealing drills from and uh, Josh Bloomer on, you know, all these, you know, all these guys that are just great hitting instructors that we're stealing videos and 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 because that's what we are as coaches. We're a bunch of thieves and we try to steal everybody's, um, you know, drills and and hopefully not players. <laughs> but sometimes that happens too. I see. So just keep that in mind. Is uh, don't don't let your ego um, cause your kids to suffer. Don't let you know. Don't think that this um, this app is too is too advanced for a ten year old kid because I promise you they're better at YouTube than you are. They're better at everything else than you are. So really get it down to them and let those let them progress. Uh, one last number that I'll really kind of throw out there to you is so we jumped on our first swing was December twenty eighth, twenty eighteen. Since then up to today we have taken six hundred fifty six thousand and nine hundred fifty one swings as an organization that are that are uploaded on Blast a lot. So we're on our way to a million. That's our goal, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna reach that challenge too. I love that. Thank you so much, Josh. I appreciate. I mean, you dropped a lot of nugs on there, and I appreciate that. Uh, that was awesome. Um, okay, Scott, take us home. We need you to cheer. I'm just kidding. Okay, go. And I I don't even know how I follow all these guys. Uh, that's the that's the scary part. Um, you know, we were. Uh, as you said, we were one of your your first organizations that kind of jumped in all in, and we we want 100 percent sure what we weren't sure what we were jumping into when we said yes. I just knew that we felt there was a need to start to know more about our hitter swings, and this was an absolute incredible platform to be able to do that. And uh, I would I'll be uh, honest in saying that. Blast has evolved for us in a lot of ways. I think you and I have talked about that uh, quite a bit, Francesca, is, is um, 
we we utilize blast now to help create our swing profile and the new the new uh swing profile um document that lindsay showed in her um slides is something that now we've just it's incredible uh credible tool for us to be able to utilize it the same way uh in the sense to say hey listen we think you're doing really well in this area and here here's where your your swings are but not enough of them are in the area we want so let's just let's work on this we don't really get into the deep dive on the number side of it but we give them a plan of action to be able to take take their swing in that direction if that's what we're looking to do uh, what it's evolved into more more than anything else too is we we translate it like as a like almost like a health monitor um and we're able to take individual looks at hitters at times and we we have a lot of players and um you know when you have 125 teams you you got a bunch of players and and seriously every player in our program is on has a blast motion sensor and so I think at one point, I think we were breaking the uh, the Blast Connect portal uh, with the swings uploading it at one point. So, um, which was a cool thing. And, but it was really neat to see Blast react and make that happen and, and fix that issue. And it was a cool thing to be going through actually. But um, we take certain teams each week and we just analyze and we kind of identify players that are maybe struggling in some particular areas. And we also highlight some players that are doing well in some, some particular areas and, and make sure to take time to discuss both areas um, and have that conversation with our coaches, et cetera. Um, and what that's done is translate into the first piece of what we're trying to do in creating better hitters, which is there's the swing profile and then uh, there comes a point which we start looking at what the batted ball profile looks like. And those two work hand in hand together and uh i think that that's the piece that uh we've spent a lot of time is trying to reach correlation between the swing profile and the batted ball profile and what certain hitters do things really well and certain hitters don't do things really well and i think it's it's uh wrong for us to ask them to do things that they're not capable of doing uh it's unfair at times and or we're not maximizing how we approach it so um and so to take that, how we're swinging through COVID-19, um, uh, there's a lot of unknown. And really, every coach in here talked about how um, they're working with their players to understand how to get their work in and be their own coach. And we took the philosophy of, of having them go to work. Like, hey, you know, now you've got now you're going to see what the real world's like on your own without someone holding your hand uh, every single step of the way. You're going to. And so we make our kids punch a time clock uh, now, uh, and they annotate where their time is spent on which areas of their of the, of their athleticism, if you want to call it. You know, everything from working out to swinging to pitching, uh, and we use a, a a thing called Clockify, and and we're able to see where their work is being put in, and they're able to see where their work is, and they're able to see where their teammates' work is being put in, which is not always fun for them because we put that out and say i i shot out a couple uh text messages this morning and said i'm i'm not sure if you're paying attention to what your teammates are doing but you better jump on the truck or they're going to leave you and uh you know that en enabled got some responses pretty quick I, I just i usually put them on blast and group me and then and immediately i can just see in real time the the stuff start to happen on the screen um but uh it's enabled us to to make them accountable in a lot of ways Blast Motion obviously does that because we know how many swings they're taking, when they're taking them, and the quality of the swings that they're taking. So uh, that's really been a really uh, fun thing for us to take advantage of a really tough situation around the country. You know, I, we're trying to have conversations. We're doing Zoom meetings with our players, just like uh, a lot of the guys on here are doing. And, and we've got one scheduled for tomorrow at 11 a.m. And one of the things we're doing as well in taking a look at their blast motion swings and those numbers um, is we're developing individual conversations with each hitter and taking time that we have right now to talk about the hitting process um, and talk about their approach and what they felt they've done well in the past and what they feel like maybe they've struggled and to have legitimate one-on-one -on -one conversations that, you know maybe we have a player um, I, I can tell you right now, we have a player on our team that has her, her exit velocity, her, her blast motion numbers are off the chart. She's not hitting enough home runs. And uh, she'll admit that. 
and we've had that conversation and it's created dialogue for us to talk about new ways for her to hunt pitches and hunting them in the right counts and 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 doing things that will enable that all that those great swing metrics that she's building every day and the the fun numbers that come off the bat when she does hit it right but if her approach isn't right then much of the stuff doesn't matter and so it's been fun to be able to have those conversations amidst this challenge that we have with not being able to be physically with our players and be on the field. And so I think that's my, been my uh, information out to a lot of our coaches is take this and turn it into a really big positive. Cause we're all, we all know we're going to play softball again and it's going to be important to what it looks like when we come back. And uh, so that's one of the ways we've gone about, about it. Uh, I think uh, I'll, I'll jump on what Josh said too is, uh, I'm really excited about creating dialogue with our younger players and teaching them jargon about hitting. Like, I don't know what it must look like to somebody standing from afar watching me, a 52 year old dude talk with a 13 year old kid. And we're talking about hitting jargon. And she's telling me, she's talking about her rotational acceleration. And so I'm, I'm, blessed in my mind i think it really fires me up to think what is that kid's softball iq and her hitting iq like at 18 years old and uh so I, that's fun thing to think about what it's what it's going to be the technology exists and blast was the at the forefront of creating this opportunity for our hitters and our our players to learn in this way um the the recruiting piece that i think exists in this uh you know i and i Lindsay and Sam and and I haven't had the opportunity to talk with Katie about this, but I know this uh, Lindsay and Sam and I both have talked about um, that this is going to become a bigger component. Metrics and data are going to become a bigger component of the recruiting process. It exists. I'm sure that at Texas Tech and at LSU and at Minnesota, they have swing characteristics and swing profiles that they know match up to the best hitters in the SEC or the best hitters on their team. And it's gonna be really neat for Josh and I and all the other travel ball coaches to be able to have conversations and say, listen coach, this I know is where you're, the metrics and the profile, the type of hitter you think does well in the SEC or the Big 12 or the Big 10. And I have a hitter that her metrics fall inside that. This would be a really solid player for you to take a look at. We'd love for you to do that. And I have quantifiable data to back that up. And I think that's that's the component that's the that's the next level of of, of this process. And you know, I go back to I, I say this as well, and I know Josh appreciates this. Um, we have that's our responsibility as trial ball coaches. We are responsible for the development of the players we send to college, and it's important that we take that very seriously, um, that we embrace it, uh, and we train for it, that we train our coaches for it, and that. Um, it's the reason I have such, sometimes I have challenges with umpires. I try to explain to them, you're responsible for the, the development of the players we send to college and their understanding of pitch selection and hunting in the right counts. And it's, this, is a, this is a full circle responsibility that we all have. And having blast motion and this type of technology uh, gives us the ability to train players to be the best versions of themselves when we send these guys off to, off to college. So um, I just I appreciate it getting a chance to come on here and talk about this. Thank you so much, Scott. That was incredible. Like, I'm so happy that you were one of the first ones to come on board with us because you care so much about your players. And that's what everyone is on here for, right? That's why you guys said yes to come on because we need to give our players what they deserve. They've been putting in so much hard work and we can't stop that now. So I thank you guys so much. And I'm going to kind of transition now over into our Q&A. Um, at first, I thought I was going to call on specific college coaches and coaches, but I think I might just have maybe one of you just raise your hand if you want to answer it because, I don't know, maybe one of y'all have a really great answer and I chose the wrong one. So um, kind of to uh, uh, Scott's point, actually, what for the, this is for the colleges specifically, what impact is BLAST data having in the recruiting process? This is a question from Greg. So again, what impact is BLAST data having in the recruiting process? I'll go. Um, I'll go. I think one of the biggest impacts for us is it sets a benchmark. 
um, of like what we think is good and what level. The benchmark is already built in via blast, which is nice. Um, it lets us know that we're not watching a kid play, swinging a hot bat, hitting a jack. Like we can actually look at our numbers and, and see what our bat speed numbers really are. It, it's what all of professional baseball is doing, right? Like the Astros trash cans aside, like they've been, they've been working those things in for so long. They, they know that this guy has these numbers that are intangible and we should continue to develop him and move him up the, the ladder. And so I think from a recruiting perspective, it gives us those options. Now we have to have access to those things which is, you know, that's up to the, the travel ball coaches and the kids to, to send us those numbers. And I want to see, like, obviously a range of numbers, not just like, oh, I had a hot week and I was swinging it well. But we want to see their development in it and, and how they grew. But I think it's going to become a massive recruiting piece over the next couple of years. Sam, do you want to touch on that, too, or pretty much the same? Well, you know, it's hard to ever compare to what Lindsay's going to say. So I will <laughs> – Keep it short. Um, I also have to um, to leave, unfortunately, in a second. Um, I have a Texas Tech uh, department call I need to be on too. So just want to say thank you again for letting me be a part of this. And if anyone ever wants to talk any more about Blast, um, anything more than how they can utilize, Lindsay touched this about leashing their cage. There's a lot of uh, formulas that we've worked out to understand to achieve a certain you know, degree to impact or a certain angle um, at launch or things like that too, that we've done in our cage without something necessarily measuring that too, but using our sense for that. So anyone's well can reach out to me too. Um, I think it's really helped us too in terms of camps um, from a recruiting standpoint. I know that for us, we try and keep our camps to where we see as many, many kids as possible. And we keep our numbers to where I can really, really be able to watch swings the way I want to. But there are certain times where a kid gets 10 cuts, right? Or a kid is sick or I just, I miss a great swing. There's only, and I think that it's really unwise for me to be able to base all of our recruiting at camps off of what I see. I think that's pretty egotistical of me. I think that I can just watch all of these kids to be able to just make decisions on my own. So to have a collection of data, um, to know that these kids who are swinging, there's not one kid who come, who's ever come through our camp in the last two years that does not have blast metrics on them. So to be able to see how they progressed throughout the years, um, I think is really important, but also to be able to see if they have 10 cuts, that I have this list of information. It's not just what my eyes see. It's I have all of this information off of 10 cuts. And 10 cuts with data behind it is more than 100 of me just watching. So I think that it's been a huge part of what we do, too, in terms of recruiting on our campus. Awesome. Thank you, Sam, and thanks for joining us. I'm going to try to get in two more questions before the end of this. Um, this question was asked by Jody, and I'm actually going to direct this towards uh, Katie. Um, Katie, what would you say the three most important metrics you are looking at when you are recruiting a hitter? Yeah, so I'm pretty much like Sam. We Any kid that comes to our campus and is going through our camp process, we are always going to throw a sensor on them because it gives you a little bit of like either confirmation or if you're like, there's something there, there might be something there. Is there something I'm missing? It, is this a reason to take a chance? Like I, we, I mean, there's a couple of kids that have come from the middle of nowhere and it's like 26 G's, 27 G's rotation. I'm like, there's something there I can do with, I can do something with that. So um, it's really helped on that end, but um, I would say I'm definitely looking at the rotation number. I'm looking at their uh, the raw power number. So what do they have right now? Like what are they providing right now in this moment? Um, and where can we go from that? And then I'm really looking at the on-plane because on-plane, I'm really big on recruiting with low swing and misses. So when you get your swing off, are you making contact? So low swing and miss rate, so being on-plane for a long time, having the rotation there, and then the raw power number I really like looking at. So if somebody's coming in, big, strong kid with a big uh, power number, it's like, okay, I can do something with that. That may be a reason to take a chance. Maybe something that you're not seeing in one or two at-bats that we get to see some players over summer. You may get to see one or two at-bats. But what Glass has provided us with is what we don't have enough of, and that's time. There's not, We don't have eyes all over the country. We don't have enough time to get in as many at-bats. But Glass has provided us access to – 
see trends and development over time. And that's really up to the player how early in the process that they're starting using these metrics and then can show us how they've developed over time. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to just say one thing. So we got a lot of these questions. We got a lot of questions on this uh, that I'm going to answer. Um, it was, uh, where can um, our current customers find the player report that Lindsay showed? Well, all the people who asked those questions, um, I actually just found out about that today, too. And like I said, I've already had last for two years now. Uh, so um, everyone is actually, they now have access to this. This is something that's new. Um, so please, if you have your, you know, your account manager, um, if you guys aren't with Blast, you do get an account manager. So uh, please reach out to your account managers, and they will show you how to access um, this new awesome graphic and visual for your players. Now I know we got a lot. Um, we got a lot uh, of questions unanswered, so I will make sure that we get them all answered and sent to you guys afterwards. Um, please also know that if you do go to blastmotion.com, we are making sure that we can make Blast available to everyone who's trying to train uh, to train while dealing with this crazy time right now in the country and the world, really. Um, so we have two different packages that we're now posting out there to make sure everyone has the ability to at least get a sensor um, with some pretty heavy discounts. So check it out. Um, uh, check out the website, blastmotion.com. And then we're going to be doing this again next week, all right? We're bringing in another fire panel, um, diving into deep on how these uh, coaches are using Blast. So we're going to have Josh Bloomer from Duke. Um, he was coaching at Duke his first year last year, so prior to that, he was a travel ball coach, too, so we're going to have, like, two minds in that sense. Uh, Kayla Jackson, Jackson, KJ from South Carolina, Heather Tarr from the Dub, uh, Marty Tyson from Corona Angels, and then a special guest, surprise guest, you guys got to sign on to see it, red, white, and blue, I don't know who. Uh, so thank you guys so much, and I hope that you guys come back next week and get to uh, learn with us. Thanks again, guys. Bye.